Kulka and Pedigo are two pretty unique examples. I think there might only be at least, at most, one or two more that are actually cross-border. In fact, we are infuriatingly unique in a lot of senses because conservation becomes difficult because we not only have a whole host of landowners on this side that have land within the SAC, um, and we have the Northern Ireland Environment Agency on this side, but as soon as you get up to the border, uh, the fence on the summit there that runs kind of parallel along that ridge, uh, then you get into Cavan, and you have Cavan County Council, you have Commonage over there, which has 400 landowners which have rights to it, and you have National Parks and Wildlife Service instead of NIEA. So we have a hell of a lot of stakeholders, a lot more than a lot of other areas would. I mean, whenever they were drawing the border, well, I suppose it's the border between Fermanagh and Cavan, realistically, then this would have been a pretty sensible and straightforward place to draw a line because it wouldn't have been at the forefront of disagreements between landowners, for example. This would have all historically been treated as commonage or it wouldn't have been owned at all. It was a pretty wild landscape, even more so than it is today. So it would have been a very, very easy place, both looking at a map because it had that distinctive shape and because there wouldn't have been a hell of a lot of disagreements to think about whenever you drew that line. And then the border runs down to the left of where you can kind of see the ridge just ending there. And then it goes out across this vast, flat, expansive, absolutely nothing but bog. Or mamba, as we used to call it when I worked over in Scotland, which means miles and miles of bugger all. Right there is the highest point of the border, just at the tip. And uh, but it's not a particularly high mountain actually. It's only it's only the 165th highest mountain in Ireland, so not very high. Uh, but it is the highest point of the border by quite a long way actually. It's probably the it's probably the place where the border is at its most sort of formidable. I mean, you can actually see it sort of looks like a frontier, and it probably looked like a frontier to people who lived here for thousands of years. But being up there when the ray is quite interesting because the whole thing with Kulka Mountain is it catches uh, rainfall from the whole area. And it, it, obviously it's, uh, the weather conditions, it, it tends to get a lot of rainfall. And then all the rain comes down it and it filters into these cave systems which are under our feet. And the most famous one being Marble Arch, which is just over there. And, uh, but this whole area, it's limestone underneath. That's mudstone, so it's quite solid. But underneath it's all limestone and it's all shot through with caves. There's thousands of them down there. This whole thing is all full of holes. So there were divisions everywhere. I actually find the running has, has transgressed up. That's actually brought me into contact with people who I would never normally see in a professional status. I feel free when I'm running and I don't feel politically infringed at all by it. Um, no, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. Mind you, 20 years ago when I met my wife, I vowed we would never move here, so things have changed. Um, things have changed dramatically. But for me, the border, when I was a teenage girl, was about the fun going across the border and the army guys searching the garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing the young ones, like when I'd be talking about things, like, Mum, that doesn't matter to us anymore. We don't think about things like that. You know, they have no concept of difference or borders or anything. <clears throat> and I think it is a step backwards. The line on the map is, uh, is loaded with a, a questions of identity. But then you actually come to the landscape and then it's something else because the line isn't actually here. And instead you find yourself in this much more diffused kind of zone where uh, here we are in this blanket bog and the other side of Kulka, there's a, another blanket bog, very like it. And uh, so you start, it starts to mean something else completely different. Everywhere we go! Everywhere we go! Everywhere we go. People always ask us! People always ask us! I want to do it! Who we are! Who we are! Where do we come from? Where do we come from? And we always tell them! And we always tell them! We're from Kevin! We're from Kevin! Kayaking, along the Castle Sanderson River. I didn't see, I didn't find the border. What does the border look like? Yellow. I, was it? I think we were told it was yellow. I, I, I didn't find it. 
I think it's yellow too. This generation that we work with wouldn't know, you know, what the border was like. Because the roads were closed, you had a lot of walking through fields, and a lot of people was the same to get to their schools and meet their buses. We were actually dragged at times through the rivers on rope um, to get to school, maybe coming home us, um, seriously. I remember my dad throwing a rope across um, the river to pull us uh, home. And I was talking to a farmer once, he had to travel 16 miles and his farm was split by the river. He could see his cattle on the far side in the north, but he had to travel all that distance because his crossing point had been blocked off because there was an incident on the border. Um, and he had to do that four times a day rather than literally traveling 10 meters to get across the, the, the small bridge which connected his farm. I know I'm farming from a left school. I remember some of this farm was overgrown and now we have it in fields like you've seen today. You know, we've worked hard to get it into good farm and we're still in a bad vein of land here in, in South Carolina. Land's like owning your own house maybe to some people. You know, we own it. We're going to do our best to keep it. It's an old saying around here, you only, you'll only own land once. When you fly into Ireland, you see the 40 shades of green, you see the mountains and all the rest. That is there because of agriculture. Agriculture is maintaining it, right? So take away that, you will see land being effectively neglected, abandoned, it'll become scrubbed over, and worst case scenario, it'll eventually end up a mixture of like European gorse and winds, and that will just be detrimental, so bad, so bad, to the environment in terms of the, the, the birds, the wildlife that we know. Well, there's two, because we're on the border of Monaghan and Calvin, so you go that way, you're over in Clonus, and you go that way, you're over in Calvin. I saw May go up and walk my course and come back from my horse. Like, if there's a show, I'd be up and down out of Calvin twice every day. Like, the horse, eh, no, I ride him for someone else, so I do. And he's actually from Calvin. So even like owners and stuff of ours and half of mummy's riding school pe uh, students would be from the south. Well, having a harder border would be tougher to get up and see him as much and it'd be harder to bring him down home every now and again. It's not a big deal for me, like I'd rather have him here where I know the people and I know the place than have him at some stranger's place that I didn't know in Calvin, which is easier to get to. Well, the border in this town, I didn't even know that, that Pedigo, I didn't even know Pedigo was in the south. I really didn't. I thought it was in the north. I thought it was in the north. So, but it was only until we realised that we were chatting to people, they told us that the border was yeah. actually on the bridge, north yeah. and south, and where the boulders more or less were is the border. So that would have been cut through the middle. I didn't know that. Yeah. And we, we, they were telling stories about their childhood. I grew up listening to all the fun they had in Pedigo. Uh, going out on the ice when the river was frozen. Uh. <laughs> going up the border. Um, Kathleen and her other sister, Narita, would be sent up to get flour. Yeah. And, and, and they, they had a homemade bag made by our mother because she made everything and they were swinging the bag. We were coming down the hill and up at the far side and we were swinging the bag over and back like this and the two handles came off and the, and the flower went away down, rolled away into the free state. <laughs> <laughs> and the customs men said nothing at all. Should they probably No. Knew? Yeah. They would have searched anything and lifted it off here. Butter. What else? And you'd smoke and sugar. Don't think so, Butter Hank. And what else? There's a whole lot of things you had to smuggle. Farmers had to smuggle too. Well, I can just know from listening to my parents and the older, my older siblings uh, growing up, it was, it was uh, having to make do and doing the best. I mean, if, if I described my mother as a smuggler, I would say she was a very <laughs> pious, good living woman. But they had to because children had to be fed and, you know, uh, and people, I suppose, understood that. And I suppose there was a, a, an adversity in life, but maybe there was opportunities because they lived near the border and they took those opportunities. 
particular characteristic is to define anybody who has a border nearby them. They don't have to live right beside it because you start the border, it, as we always kind of talk about, the border in the mind. Um, so in terms of which way you consider traveling or which way you consider is the local shops or which way you consider um, is your, uh, I suppose, your civic relationship to, um, that's, de that's defined a little bit by the border. So yeah, there's, and there's sometimes a nervousness, sometimes a quietness, sometimes a, a, a reluctance to, um, uh, to share information because of the nervousness, particularly with the circumstances that happened here. Uh, interestingly enough, I grew up on a, a different border town in County Tyrone, and we would have socialised in the Republic of Ireland rather than Northern Ireland. So, and I don't know why exactly, but at that stage in the 1980s, most of us went to, would have gone to Letterkenny or to Donegal for a night out. And maybe there was part of it that your parents felt it was less dangerous. For me, I suppose, and it's something I knew even before I left Ireland, a sense of community is, is much stronger here than, than I ever found anywhere in, in England. Because people that live um, on the border, um, they have to be a wee bit more open-minded and friendly orientated to people uh, crossing and visiting all the time, you know. I definitely would emphasize yeah. the word cross-community. They're, you know, we all have Catholic you know and Protestant who your neighbors. neighbors are. Yeah. We know who our neighbors are. We chat to them, we yeah. communicate with them, and we trade with them. So I do believe that the people in the border have more tolerance than the people in the cities. It's an invisible line, even though it's there. People yeah. just get on, just do their thing. Yeah. You know, whether this it's all going to change with the talk that's going on nowadays. It's hard to see. Mm -hmm. All these things are going to get squeezed. All these things are going to be squeezed the way we're going, especially with our non-representation in government at the moment. Definitely. The young really. farmers have a challenge. Yeah. They have. What's ahead of them, the next generation? Yeah. It's a very uncertain future. So there are possible implications, but um, I would hope that mm. Given how much um, of an improvement there has been in the ecology of these landscapes, particularly in terms of things like water quality and habitats in the past number of years, I would like to think that they, the, the powers that be know that things are going the right direction and that major changes probably aren't uh, going to have any positive impact in the future. Well, I feel very connected to it. I know Kathleen yeah, does too. I do. I know, we feel very connected. I love to come back every now and again and walk about up the street and down the street. From a, you know, from a further point of view, mm. it's, I feel it's part of our soul, it's in us, and part of our soul is in the land, that's the way I look at it. Mm. We're attached to it in a kind of a, almost a deeply spiritual sense.